Hello everybody, thank you for being here. Uh, yeah, as some of you noticed, we had some issues during the recording of our latest webinars about the Watch and Learn, the Backs of School. So uh, what I'm doing is, uh, it's Sunday, I take uh, a couple of time to record those again so that you have a, a good quality and uh, I hope a, a good insight and good presentation. So maybe quickly back around the, the concept between the behind the watch and learn back to school. So the idea is really to share during three sessions everything we have learned uh, on a couple of months uh, or years I should say around email marketing which is still very important. That is typically the, the, the subject we're talking today, watch and learn back to school. Um, if you see sometimes my eyes getting down it's because I still don't have the best setup but I'm, I'm working on it. So I'm recording this also on my computer. Maybe quickly around the agenda. So we had three main topics. The first one was a bit more about the basics and beyond, talking about figures. We had that little contest in it which I will of course getting back to you with the answers and everything uh, that I think was very useful for every marketeer behind the screen. We have a second session where we will really slice and dice the email in, in small pieces to have those little gems about what can we today increase um, challenge in all our type of communication. We will talk of course about A-B testing but pre-headers for example and those kind of little stuffs are very important today in the email marketing. And then we will have a third session which is a bit more advanced session if I can say that way uh, where we all talk about a hot topic which is deliverability. Most of the time very under evaluate in everything we do around email. It's great to have the best strategy, the best email on design level and of course on content level but if we don't get those in the mailboxes then we will have issues. That will be the third topic. So the topic of today is really basics and beyond. Uh, maybe quickly about myself because it's not the idea to talk about myself. So those don't know me. Um, I'm working for Actito for nearly 10 years now. Uh, yeah, that's a, a while like we said. Uh, and my job is really trying to connect marketeers with what we do offer through our technology. So we are marketing automation technology. That's Actito stand for. Agile of course is a big part of what we offer to our customer. And I try to be that link a bit uh, between you customers prospect, uh, marketeers and engineers so that we can really find that right balance between technology but also human on the support which I do believe is important. At the end it stays humans to human although we talk a lot about uh, technology in, in our world uh, basically. Um, so yeah you have all my uh, info, Twitter, email, website of course. Happy to discuss more with you and see how we can uh, have that great chat and learn maybe from each other which is always what I do appreciate the more uh, every day. So very quickly about our company, Actito is a company based in Belgium, uh, booted by three guys in 2001, directly jumped into the SaaS which make us quite uh, unique I think today. Um, based on our evolution we did some of course some pivot but we are really focused on providing the best marketing automation technology to marketeers. Sorry for the IT guys I still have APIs for you so don't be scared you will still be able to leverage what do we offer to marketeers as well but our focus is really the marketeers. We have something about more than 200 nearly 250 clients today. A presence in Belgium of course with our HQ in the Netherlands and Paris and also in Quebec which make us an international company. Um, we grow by 20% year by year which I think is a good sign that basically our offer did uh, answer or do answer uh, should I say the market uh, needs today. Yeah and a bit more than 100 people uh, which make us uh, a big team I guess and um, I love that team and I want to say thank you to this podcast to those, those guys that make it possible for me to talk to you but also for you to use our technology. Value proposition, very easy. Uh, like I said already up front, uh, we want to help marketeers identify business opportunities because everybody knows it today. Marketing is today more than just building great uh, creative campaigns. We need to prove that we can bring uh, ROI, return on investment. For every euro we're spending, we want to see something happening on the figures level of course, the engagement. How do we do that? By working on what we call the customer journey and we will try to have that right mix between technology and support. That's really our baseline for us. It's empowering marketeers with technology and great people. Okay, that's enough for the 
business talking, I will say. So let's maybe jump quickly into the quiz we did together. Um, we had uh, quite a lot of participants. I was quite impressed by it. And the idea was really to have something a bit more engaging like we can, that we can discuss today. So I built quickly a table with the answers, the right answers, and also the average of people that answer right. We are between the 60 and 100, depending on the languages. But so it gave us, I think, a, a fair good vision about the, the expertise of the Belgian marketeers. So uh, when was sent the first email? 1971 uh, was the right answer. Uh, nearly one out of two was right. And uh, I will link my first question directly to the third one because we invented the at the Arabat, like we say in French, it's Ray Tomlinson, and basically that guy died a couple of years ago. That was quite amazing. Basically, what that guy did, Massachusetts, uh, MIT, like we say over there, it's a very famous school, um, and he was able to send a message not just from a machine to another machine, but he used what we called ARPANET, which was the previous internet, the military stuff, I will say. And instead of just leaving a message, because you could consider an email like a post-it that you could leave on a, on a computer and the guy that went after you could access those messages. He said it would be so nice to be able to use the internet to send not a computer to another computer on the same network, on the same computer, but rather use the internet to send from a computer to some other computer somewhere else. And that was really the idea behind it. And so that's how he was able to send the first email in 71 by putting, I don't know, something like 200 lines of code. But he still had one major issue. Uh, he had to make a difference between the peoples and the company. And he was looking at the only key that was not used on the keyboard yet, which was the at. So that links a bit the two. He invented it, but he also had to be very creative about how he could leverage it further away. That's exactly what he did with the at. So who sent the first spam? Uh, very funny, uh, most of the people said marketeers, uh, which is totally not true. And I still don't believe that marketeers send a lot of spam. They do a lot of push communication, but I think that spam is still something else. And this is what more salesmen. Um, from out of my background, I can understand why you do that. Uh, sales guys love to be a bit less, uh, how can I say, um, uh, I don't come back on my words, sorry. Um, lazy, that was the word I was looking for. So uh, if they could send 100 emails and hope to have a 3% reach of people answering them back, it's short in their sales cycle. So they feel good because less effort, still the same cash. So it was the sales guy that sent the first spam we were not uh, very in line because a lot of you said marketeer. So be cool, you do really a good job because that is not what you do. What is the percentage of adults having an email address? I think it's very important to understand that because a lot of people, and we are now nearly end of year, we start in Q4, is arriving very fast. So the blog post will come up with the date of email, uh, that email isn't used by any teenager, which is true by the young generation, but also the old people don't use them anymore. And and let's watch out at this. Um, I think email uh, is far from that for the simple reason that the email address is most of the time your digital ID on the internet. That's the only way that you can today purchase stuff, uh, create an account on something. So you need that one. So that you maybe not checking it on a daily basis could be the challenge. But the fact that people say that we won't use email anymore, I would put that between brackets and see if that's really the reality. So that's one part, but if you take a look at the figures, 92% of the adults have an email address. So that means that, yeah, that activity really exists and it's important for every uh, adult to have it because that's how the world works today around it. But more interesting is that 61% of them will have a look daily at it. So of course, I'm a wrong example because I work in the sphere, so I'm spending a lot of time uh, in my mailbox, probably even too much. But if you take more the private aspect, and I will have a look at my wife, she will check her email probably four or five times a week, a uh, weekend more than once. So you see that it's about finding those right moments. And we will come back on, on, on our formulas around right time marketing and moments marketing. But keep in mind, 92% of the adults have an email and 60% of them will have a look at them on a daily basis, which is huge today. And that is the opportunity we need to work on, of course. Um, we will, I was also asking the question about benchmark because benchmark is for me something uh, probably a bit 
over uh, evaluate on the aspect of what you can do with it. Uh, I don't say it's useless, don't get me wrong, but uh, the good definition was gather insight about your sector. 65% of you uh, answer right on that. So yeah, you know what a benchmark is and I will try to challenge with that vision in a couple of minutes, of course. Um, I also noticed that my question wasn't really clear about uh, who is Jonathan.Wirman at Actito.com standing for? And uh, you have an email marketing, what we call the technical sender, and also also the display center. When I'm sending an email to you, you will see something like Jonathan from Actito, but you won't see that technical email like you see now. So that was the bit the nuance in it. And um, that will be very important for the third session. We will be more around deliverability and what we can do and not do around those aspects. pre or useless? Of course, no. And uh, that's why I put it also in capital letter in the little file uh, in the PowerPoint I'm sharing with you. 86%, thank you so much. Because that is st still something uh, I fight for because a lot of people are uh, trying to get pre-headers out because they say it's useless. I don't believe in that. I, I still even believe it's very important for you to focus on your pre-headers because those are really a second chance and we will have a, a deeper discussion about that in our session two, of course. Um, and that what stands the alt for uh, alternative text for image 60% of you so we see that you're uh, quite used to do email marketing and that you understand it and we will of course tell this a bit more in the coming sessions that said uh, why you should love email and still strongly believe in its added value as most of the marketers mostly ask me, they, they like figures. Um, we need to report on figures, on ROE, on everything we mentioned over there, on financial aspect. So of course we need figures to underlay our strategies and build up on top. So I love to start with that little intro for Carol Walter, which is a, a customer of us in France. Uh, very famous agencies, uh, more than 20 years experience in it, probably lived everything around the possibilities in digital marketing from the MSN, you know, the old chat stuff that we were all using, uh, up to today more advanced social media campaigns. And she said, basically in our text over here, that each year, and that's a bit the introduction I had a couple of minutes ago, each year you will hear that email is dead, that it will be replaced by the blogs, by inbound marketing, by social media, then we heard the uh, mobile aspects of course now we will say that whatsapp is the next big thing and that everybody's focusing on that and it's true you we get more and more channels but we it's become also more and more complex for people to challenge them and know where to find the information though I, I i like our approach by saying that email is the phoenix of direct marketing it's reborn from its ashes every time it's given for that and i as strongly believe that's how we should as marketers think about email marketing. We notice it on our level at Actito every year. We will see an increase in December because sales, uh, we need to have those lovely gifts for our kids and family uh, under the, the, the center tree and everything. So it's a very hot period also with uh, the sales and everything. Then high, high, push, 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 push. And then we will have that kick drop in January. And then in March is getting up again because we notice that we need to maintain those relation with our customer with those prospects and email is a great way to do that so really think more about other channels instead of a channel taking it over on another one so that's really i think the the major focus over here some key figures that you can print out and show really to your bosses that you still need to invest in, in the email channel. Uh, like we said, 92% of the adults have one, 61 reading. I think that's already a, a very nice one. On average, and this is since the three lay uh, last year, 40% more effective than social media. And I'm even not talking about the budget aspect only, but really also the reach, the performance, the conversion that you will get out of it. When we talk also about email marketing, we still get that question. Yeah, but I'm more B2C, I'm more B2B. Um, that will only engage my own world over here. I do believe that B2B and B2C are really close to each other on the concept, on the complexity behind it. I think that basically by batching yourself B2B or B2C for a vendor, you can sell 10x more 
when you say that you are uh, helping B2B than when you are helping B2C. But at the end, the processes are the same. It's about the right moment, it's about the right content, it's about the right channel. So let's be honest, it's 82% adoption in both. Focus basically on providing value, but you see that there is no real distinction between B2B and B2C. Um, yeah, of course, the big challenge today was to make our emails more readable on mobile. And I think that is also giving that uh, second life to email was mobile. iPhone really changed that game uh, with the, the little envelope that we have on the, the tip of a finger. Uh, Android has the same approach. So you see that even there, email is still very present. And we talked today about nearly 60% reading in Europe on mobile devices, which is huge. Depending on your sector, you can be above or below, of course. But Top line info, 60% reads uh, of your people reads your email on mobile. Think about it, very important for the second session we will have. 70% of uh, increase in opening and 152 in click when you talk about trigger campaigns. Trigger campaigns really plays the, the, the job of being on the right time with the people. When you're entering a store, and that's most of the time the example I take with my wife, she loves shoes. When she gets into a store, if the sales lady jump on her uh, as soon as she opened the door, she will probably don't buy anything from there and be gone in a couple of seconds. But de facto, if she take, I don't know, any kind of shoes and that she's looking at that for four, more than five minutes and that the sales lady is still talking with her colleagues, that will also break the relation and she won't buy it. So you see the, the right moment is really the importance and you see how important trigger campaigns can play a role in that. By Preparing those 70% increase in opening, 152 in click. I think the click is the most important because that will bring also your conversion up. Okay, that said, that was it more for the analytical part of it. Uh, still funny to have those quick um, infographics, I will say. Uh, the one on the left is basically how you spend your first uh, your first hour uh, when you wake up, <laughs> and. I still ask it when I give lessons um, who uses phone as an alarm to wake up in the morning and I think you have more than 90% of us doing that. I don't say it's a good thing but um, that means that basically on mobile is also bringing us directly to that fingertip of an email box. So you see that a lot will check texts, calls, what happened during the night, social media and that is everything we do even before going to the bathroom and when you will have a deeper look we are we are 5.5% of the people who are already checking their emails. Um, I played guilty for that one, a uh, very bad habit, of course, uh, because you already start indirectly putting pressure on you. But just to show you again, email is really a, a part of our daily life, even in that first hour when we're thinking, uh, we're booting our day. Um, a bit more advanced from the emarketers.com, they show also uh, that texting, phone calls, email, social media, you see that split in it. And even if we're talking about the WhatsApp, the Facebook, the Instagram, which is probably around 35% of the usage, email still is 10%. So imagine again how deep and how you can play with that in your own strategies. Okay, benchmark. Very wrong topic for me for a, a couple of reasons. Um, I think that benchmark are very American-driven figures most of the time. And I don't think we in Europe really... Uh, consume the same way as the Americans um, and so I think it's dangerous to compare ourselves always to those guys. So it's really not focus on uh, Paris figures or France figures, Belgian figures. If you take Belgium, American will say it's a very complex market with three languages and really different habits and government behind it. And push on that a very important topic for us, which is the GDPR, everything around the regulation of the European uh, data around consumer. I think that's the first thing that I don't really like about benchmark. I think it's dangerous and when you badly use it can impact or provide wrong insights. But again, you can really use them and if we have a little focus and uh, I will try to highlight it in the presentation, but if you take the business and finance, for example, line six in the little table, they are talking about an opening rate of 20.97 and a click-through rate of 273. When you take those figures um, and that I challenge them with my own customer and finance, they wouldn't be happy with that because today on average they are above the 30%. And so this could be, uh, it could tell, uh, give them a, a wrong uh, insight by saying, okay, we are very good in email marketing, so we don't need to invest more to increase those figures. And that is, I think, the, the first pitfall uh, behind benchmarks is when you use benchmark 
as a, a safety umbrella, for example, you will miss the real opportunities because if you're really good, you can even be better. And I'm, I'm a competitor and I like to challenge myself. And I think that's the major purpose of a benchmark is just see on average, how is my market doing it? But it's not because I'm doing good on my market that I cannot be extremely good in it. And that would be really the insight I would say about benchmark. Build your own ones because otherwise I can tell you with three figures, if you're doing well, if you're above 20% opening, you're a good player, 2% click, awesome player and you don't uh, go above the 0.3 and unsubscribe, okay, your vanity metrics are right, you're doing pretty good on that, but again, try to challenge yourself. I think that is a really important part in email marketing, is how can I challenge myself, go that little step further and break my own figures, uh, make my bosses even more happy, uh, and even before your boss, your customers, because that's the goal, it's make your customers happy. So how can you do that? Build your own benchmark, try to compete on it, run A-B testing continuously. Um, I learn every day. The day that I'm not learning, I need to change that because it's not normal in our area, in our kind of business, that we wouldn't learn every single day an extra piece about how to challenge our own strategies or own figures. So really keep track also of those A-B testing. I think that's very important to know what's working and that you retest them sometimes. It's really a continuous process and marketing automation is really about that. And then two little tips now that you are still busy. Analyze your campaigns three days after. Um, I know it's really addictive when you send that email. It's also linked to a, a part of the stress behind email when you push that red button and that you have hundreds of emails getting out. Um, that stress is totally normal, uh, even after 10 years when I drop a campaign, I've always that little, uh, you know, uh, cramp in my belly that says, oh, I hope I didn't make any major mistake on it. That's why you have checklists, so work with your checklist. But don't have a look at your figures before three days. Uh, those could really bring you wrong information uh, and it's useless, basically. That's the point. And then also keep a clear way of writing the the names of your campaigns, nomenclature in French, we will say that. So for example, a newsletter, dash, the month, always the same way, year, month, uh, day, for example, type of action, it's like a bit like the tags. Why do I say that? It's when you will try to build your own benchmark, you want to see those uh, Excel sheet and those columns very clearly so that you can identify what did very, uh, was very positive, what was but less negative, uh, less impactful, and playing with those will help you. But having those clear names, private table in Excel works fine if, if you have that clear naming of your campaigns, of course. Try to understand a context. Uh, that's something I, I think we, we could go deeper and, and again, feel free to share with us the, the different points and where you think we could bring extra value to you. But if you see those kind of graphic on my screen now, that's really what happened. Um, I need to buy something, I go on the internet, I will go into the stores, I will make all my research. I'm most of the time even more aware of the product and the specificities of every product when I will purchase it. And that's really how it's worked today. It's about that journey that the customers goes into and you need to identify a nice touch point with them where you can not influence but inform and I think really today the major goal of marketeer is informing so that the people can take the right actions behind it so understand that context um, understand where your customer grab the info is it simply Google do they go to social media do they post things in forums uh, do they go in any kind of groups that's really where you need to be to understand how your customer is looking for information is looking to uh, basically buy maybe your product and what he needs to be uh, assured is making the right choices behind it this is also a bit part of a, a old marketing approach, which is still, I think, very accurate. And then when I was studying marketing, and that's more than a decade ago, we talked a lot about the push and the pull marketing, and putting the customer in the center of the game was really something we were uh, very pushed by the teacher to do, but you still need to to be honest. And when you see a lot of marketing actions, those are still very uh, driven by the company, less than their customer. And it's maybe not the most, uh, the best example, but take Coca-Cola. If they want to sell more Coke cans, what will they do? They will provide a promotion in store by saying 50 cents for 24 
gets you by. That's really the brand that decide to push the product and I'm pretty sure it's working fine. You take Amazon, they do that a lot, that's push promotion. It's not really linked to who I am and what I want to do. And if you turn it other way, take for example the car industry, you buy your first car when you're 21, uh, probably a very small car uh, because you don't have a lot of budget, you're also uh, not married, you don't have kids or I think so. And after a certain stage, let's say I buy my first one at 21 and I'm going back to that website of the same manufacturer, we can still, of course, provide me advice. He sees that I'm looking at much larger car with sliding doors. So he can probably say, oh, he really changed of segment. He's now part of a family with a kid and that's all the information I need. And so he can start that conversation, that relation. That's really what I call the pool marketing is providing the right set of information at the right time to the customer so that they can go each time that little step further and further and further. That's really what you need to focus on today. Push and pull, go for the pull as much as you can. But of course, I can understand you have figures to reach, uh, targets to reach. So push and pull, find the right mix. That would be my call. I love that guy, Lester Wunderman. Uh, for those that don't know him, uh, one of the biggest agencies on earth and uh, he's really behind everything around direct marketing uh, really that first one-to-one -one communication and he says it and I think it's so true what matters today are the digital confer confer conversation sorry, uh, between brands and consumer and that's really what I wanted you to embrace is it's that relation that you build with your customer which is important um, when you think at a simple concept when you try to attract new customer in your database you will spend a lot of money and most of the Company, what do they do today? They spend a huge amount of money to attract customers in and then they don't do anything. You have that first purchase and then they stop and within three months they have something new to do and they will restart doing what they did three months ago. Awareness, traction, but they never keep the engagement, they never keep that conversation. It's very strange that brands still don't invest much more in the long last relation because I do believe that that is where the biggest ROI is today. So. Putting yourself in the socks of your customer is probably the only way to do it. Um, I try to spend a lot of time with our clients, a lot of time with our operators, different levels, CMOs, operators, designer, integrators, campaigners, just call. And by looking at them, asking them questions, sharing with them, you will learn so much that you will be able to work on what I call the customer journey. Customer journey is something very fancy at this moment uh, or since a couple of years now. And I think take it as something very easy. You get the attract part, the engagement and the grow. Then you will start what I call more the loyalty. It's nurturing, cross-selling, upselling, and of course, retaining. That's exactly what you see in those graphics behind. Um, the engage and grow for the Belgian market is still something where a lot of us should focus much more or energy on it. As soon as you collect those email addresses, those digital touch points, you need to start building that relation. It's very important. Today, there are not enough brands understanding the impact of having a great welcome sequence to having a great uh, preference center built around my expectation as a customer because I don't want you to talk about yourself but rather about the value proposition you can offer me. That's really the goal where I want yourself to put yourself into. And how do you do that? By spending time with your customer, by putting right analytics, KPIs, challenge yourself, A-B testing continuously. That's also why you need that piece of technology that a company like Actito can provide because you need to automate a part of your learnings and letting these things live so that you can basically go each time that little step further. You have a toolbox and uh, there is a lot of technology and it's not the purpose over here to dive in every aspect of the technology. just want you to have some ideas about everything you have today that give you access to great data allowing you to do great marketing. Cookies, for example, beacons, Wi-Fi, email interaction, tags, abandoned baskets, uh, uh, web behavior. Those are all technologies that today you have and that probably your company implemented in a way or another. But nobody tried to give sense to those data that you have. That's your job as a marketeer today. Pull out those buckets 
what you need to have an understanding of your customer. That will be really what I think it's important out of technology. Technology for technology is not our thing. Uh, I think technology to bring a better experience is what you should focus on. Think instead of data set. Do you want to go for big data? No. You want to go for smart data. Out of cookie, I will have the session. I can work on recency and frequency on a website. A beacon allow me to know which uh, position Jonathan had versus certain part of my store, for example. Wi-Fi could help you do the same. In the email, you know exactly on what I'm clicking, so you should be able to f identify John and link it to a persona, for example. Tags like Google Tag Manager and all those technology allow you to do crazy things about data. Abandon basket. So you get really all that technology. Use it, leverage it, go further with it. It's very important that you understand which data you can pull out of all those buckets. Um, real time is something we still uh, are really looking at and I think it's very important today to be able to have that real time interaction. The best case I know is still the what happened during uh, the Super Bowl in the US, uh, a total blackout during the finals and basically the guys from Oreo were really great because they said you can still dunk in the dark and they made a little picture with a black background and they push it in. That basically was a tweet with a picture, it's probably a huge amount of money if they had to pay for that. And that was really taking the moment and being able to leverage it directly, real time, now. That's really the bazooka, but watch out with those things. Because sometimes, th think of that example I said about my wife and the shoe store. If you jump on her when she's entering, you will have a bazooka back. So really think about it and maybe think more in the right time to engage. When she got that pair of boots in her hands in three minutes, that's the right time. That's where you can act real time with her and build conversation, understand what she's exactly looking for. So real time, of course, you need to be aware of it. Right time, it's probably the best way to engage with your customer in a, in a good way. And if you do that right, you see those kind of example. I put on the left side of my slide, the journey, the, uh, the, the different aspects where the customer are jumping in. And if you take, have a butcher, for example, not the most sexy, what you could say as a brand, but let's be honest, they can sell barbecues like hell because they use the zip code of the customer and they're providing me an insightful information which is the weather in my zip code during the weekend. So I will think about my barbecue. That's how you can play with all those data that you collected through your different technologies. And by being able to leverage them on your journey, you can really increase your figures, the impact of every marketing. The other example is more like a, a chain of a restaurant. And they notice that in the week, I'm most of the time lunching alone. Of a, I pay for my own and I go with my colleagues, but everybody pays for him. So they know that from Monday to Friday, I'm more like that business guy having a lunch at 12. But in the weekend, they noticed that I went with my wife and my son and I take the chicken and had two uh, meals for adults. So what do they do? They leverage me in the weekend by talking family and they leverage me in the week by talking business, healthy food, powering. You see, simple examples again, but try to implement those. That's really what you want to try to do. Really avoid those old funnel approach, awareness, consideration. I know where you are. Let's be honest, as marketeer, we think we know and we're missing a lot. And that example is great. Uh, the sales guy say, oh, so you're in the consideration phase. No, I'm just looking for the bathroom. And this is the kind of things I see continuously happening because we don't talk with our customer. We don't have those conversations. We don't analyze our figures. Uh, of course, I was talking about the bazooka with the real time, the right time, which is, I think, a more surgical weapon. You still have other uh, weapons in your basket today, and one of the one that I prefer is everything around personalization. And when you see Chasm, you know all the curves that have adoption, the importance of stuff and everything. Personalization is something I hear for more than 10 years now. I heard it at school, I heard it in my first jobs, I heard it at Actito as well, because that's what we try to do is leverage those personalization. When you read about topics, everybody is talking about the importance of it and nearly 95% of the company says that personalization is critical. And when you simply open your Gmail box and that you will open the promotion tab, I found one example of somebody leveraging my first name and my last name. 
I know that everybody knows those are done by robot, but not doing it show that you don't care about it, or at least that's my point. And so if I need to say that 5% of the company says that they are hyper-personalizing every type of email marketing they're sending to me, sorry, I just see 5% using the basics of it. So again, I think there is a bit of distortion between fact figures, reality of the market, but do use personalization. Try to build those minimum datas and try to increase those step by step. will give you so much insight, so much more power with your customer. I do really believe that's what you try and want to do. Little formula because, um, yeah, we are a engineer driven company behind us with the, the, the more the techie guys. So personalization is about data, content and automation. I could have a full talk on that and I would be more than happy to have those exchanges in one to one with some of you. But the moment it's exactly what I said with the weather for example. Slice weather, have a look at the segments, the postcodes and the people that correspond to that, that target group. Then you use the persona. Is it more a family, more a B2B guy? And then you go with the test learn iteration. That's the A-B testing part that Jan wants you to go into. But again, this is a, also a webinar you can find just about personalization on our website if you need more info on that. Uh, the most easy example is have you a look at the left side of my, career, of my screen. Dennis from Mega Brands. Hello, John. I've picked up out of my catalog something interesting for you. Great selection, like handpick. You really feel that notion of they have to do that extra mile. They understand who I am. They really try to provide me real value versus the other ones, which it would be mega brand, just the brand. Uh, hello, stranger, because they don't know me. Uh, I, and they also say that they don't know me and that they don't really care about me, but they want, to me, they want me to buy stuff from them. You know, very cold approach, very pushy, very poorly approach. Go for the pull. That's what I'm telling you since, I think, more than 30 minutes now. Uh, Ethan Shah, for those that don't know him, very famous entrepreneur in the US. He says it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Good email is that. Great email is more alive than ever. Keep that one in mind, print it out, stick it behind you, not in a bibliotheque like I have, uh, in a bookshelf, sorry, but on your wall and keep that in mind every time. I need to build not great, but even better than great, awesome, extraordinary impact with conversation through email. It's of course about KPIs, so quickly five KPIs and I should have put titles on it. You want to work on five very important aspects, which is basically uh, the first one is everything around the word of mouth that happened on your website, like the reviews on uh, Amazon, that's exactly how people uh, buy today, that's what you want to have. NPS could be a great way to explain that. Then you will see all your data increasing and when I talk about that it's traffic to store, traffic to website, amount of volume of people buying stuff. Those are really the metrics you're building, KPIs. You will work on your funnels. If I have 100 people extra, how much do I convert extra? Or those well done, well played, well Put together then you will have those lovely charts showing you how you increase in it and of course the best that you will have is that brand advocacy that's the fifth KPI as soon as people will start sharing their stuff their experience with your brand and how it was great and awesome and insightful for them so keep in mind five kpis that you can easily define and so that you can challenge yourself that's very important in the test learn and iteration approach as well uh, Take these tips with you. Uh, I was talking about the important part of engaging and growing your knowledge and that is really a deep focus I'm doing on Europe on that because I have less vision around the US figures for that. But I'm running a test personally and today I must say that 50% of the guys where I provide my email address will never interact with me in a short lapse of time. Uh, I will probably get some kind of shitty promotion at a certain stage where they will try to push something but as I will not remember them I will have that wrong feeling about their brand I will unsubscribe even worse I could click them as spam because I wouldn't remember I even provided my email address so really try to focus on those two elements if you're really starting with email if you get those right you will see directly your figures firing up and growing so okay that's what's it um, 
thank you for uh, listening to that. Sorry for the little issue we had uh, during the live. I hope that this session uh, provides you as much value as the, the, the live I did. And only the guys that were present can tell you that. You see my coordinates again, Twitter, email, LinkedIn. More than happy to share with you. More than happy to be challenged also by uh, the content of this, uh, the way of me to talk, the topics, everything. Really, the, this is a, a sharing moment. This is a conversation I'm holding with you. And um, I want that feedback, really. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. Uh, see you in a couple of weeks. I will maybe just redrop uh, the first slide. So, so that you can basically come back for our other session. We will be, be sharing in a couple of days. So that will be held on the 8th of October in the afternoon. The emails are following up. The record of this session will be available, uh, I guess, uh, something around the 1st or 2nd of October. Again, thanks a lot for listening and uh, looking forward for our next session. Bye-bye.